Good morning from our Coot Jersey Creamery. We got up at the crack of dawn to come out here and visit a seventh generation family farm. We're gonna meet two of the daughters today who came back to what was a commodity dairy operation to transform it into an award-winning creamery. So, Jersey cows, mm -hmm. obviously Mark New Jersey Creamery. Right. But what does it mean to have a Jersey cow as opposed to a Holstein? We've always had Jersey cows in our family, so there's that importance to it. The quality of a Jersey cow varies from other breeds. They do a really great job of producing excellent quality milk, and they have a higher butter fat and protein in their milk. For us, for cheese making, because of that extra protein, the extra fat, we get a larger yield. And so even though they're giving you less volume because it has more butter fat, you're actually getting a higher yield because that's what you're pulling out of the milk? Yeah. We want the cows to be very comfortable, very happy. We want them to continue to produce a high quality product. So we choose to graze them. And that works great for us here because we have the pasture, we have the land. As the dairy industry goes up and down, um, and a lot of farmer, dairy farmers are getting older, they choose to not milk anymore. Um, so we came back to the farm to continue on our family heritage and tradition of having Jersey cows. So Amy, Kind of give me the backstory on how all of this came to be for your family. We are a seventh generation dairy farm. My sister and I are the seventh generation. My family came from Switzerland in 1842 and um, had a Jersey calf on the boat with them. My dad took over this farm whenever he was 17 years old. My parents had four daughters. They told us all to go to college, to come back for a visit, but don't stay on the farm. And about eight years ago, my mom called me while I was living overseas and said they were gonna sell the farm whenever he was 60. And at that point, we said, uh, we don't want that to happen. I have a master's degree in counseling. Beth has a master's degree in education. It wasn't really our plan A, but whenever the reality of losing the farm became really real, it was obvious that we weren't gonna let that happen. And previous to the cheese making operation, yeah. it was a stand, it was just a dairy. Farm. Just a dairy we sold to the co-op for commodity milk prices. By becoming a creamery, right. you are creating a value-added product. Exactly. And an artisan product. That's right. And you're becoming a bigger player just in, in your community. Absolutely. The ability to provide more jobs for our rural area, the ability to um, create something that brings tourists into our area, and then we could send them into the local economy. It just built everything up around it. What is amazing to me about cheese is that you start with the same thing. Mm -hmm. You start with milk from your beautiful Jersey cows. How is it that the same milk can be turned into a Gouda or Scarmosa or right. like these different things? What is it that you do to, to shift it up? So in cheese making, it's time temperature and pH. We're going to receive the milk and we're going to look at it. We're going to make sure that everything it looks great, it smells great, tastes great. And then we add cultures to it and then uh, how long we let the culture ripen, how long we let things work, and then the process of it. So all of those things play into cheese making. I think it's interesting also that you have a Swiss design. What is a Swiss style cheese as opposed to maybe French or Italian? Sure. Um, well, it has distinct Swiss characteristics, which most of us know what a baby Swiss tastes like. A lot of the distinction also comes in the caring for the cheese as an age, but also how you make the cheese. Part of what we wanted to do whenever we built this cave was to make aged cheeses that resembled our heritage. Now, it's not going to be possible for us to make a true Gruyere or true Appenzeller, but we can make Swiss cheeses here and try to just respect where we came from. So have you found that um, over the past six years that the consumer is more educated? I mean, do you think that Absolutely. that, what do you think is really kind of feeding into that? People are just really becoming interested in understanding where their food came from. I think part of it came from the recession, even though I think it was already happening before that, but people realizing that we need to invest into our local economy. And buying good food locally is a very easy way to do that. And they're excited to know the people that are behind the product. 
The fact that people could come to our facility and see us making the cheese, see my dad who's milked cows for 47 years, that makes them feel really nice. And we want that for people. We want them to know what we're doing and be very transparent about what we're doing.